FBRD has something to say regarding the recent meeting between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping in Beijing, China. Ruth Hamilton reports. One of the most widely watched visits is the recent in-person meeting between Russian President Putin and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Putin and his entourage arrived in Beijing on Tuesday to meet Xi, whom he calls his dear friend. Both leaders showcased trust and no-limits partnership between their countries. It can be noted that China has welcomed representatives of 130 countries for the Belt and Road Initiative Trade and Infrastructure Forum. And at the very top of the guest list is Putin. The world is expecting both leaders to highlight their shared vision for a multipolarity and a new international order that is no longer dominated by the United States and its allies. The meeting between two of the most powerful leaders in the world comes amid a fast-pacing geopolitical shift triggered by the violent conflicts between Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Palestine. Meanwhile, in the recent episode of former President Duterte's Gikan Samasa para Samasa with Pastor Apollo C. Kibloy, FP. RRD said that while he is sure that Putin and Xi will talk about the latest global situation, he also believes that their joint decisions will surely have a significant geopolitical effect on the world. Whatever they decide on, and it will uh, create a more adversarial happening or uh, an event for the world. It can be remembered that both China and Russia had taken a neutral stance on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Israel has the right to defend itself and has condemned any actions that victimize the civilian population, including women and children. But he also raised the possibility that an intensified siege of Gaza by Israeli forces may resemble that of Leningrad by German troops during World War II. These actions, according to Putin, is unacceptable. Meanwhile, China's top diplomat Wang Yi has said his country condemns all acts that harm civilians and opposes any violation of international law. Wang said that Israel has the right to statehood and so does Palestine. And while Israel is no longer homeless, the Palestinian nation has yet to return to its home. He also recently urged Israel to stop its collective punishment of the people of Gaza and that Tel Aviv's actions have gone beyond self-defense. Both Russia and China also took a jab against the U.S. for the failure of its policy in the Middle East. The Israel-Palestine conflict has divided nations and their people. Meanwhile, when asked if it's high time for the Philippines to join the international fora regarding the ongoing conflict, the former president said, The Philippines, whether we like it or not, will be dragged into the fight. But I hope that uh, if the, ang ano ko na lang, ang alas ko na lang dito, mm. if the, our Muslim brothers and sisters will understand the situation, Na we do not have to go to kill each other mm. in order to, sell, to show our sentiments where we reside as a, in the ongoing conflict. Uh -huh. President, we never sided with anybody. We are not saying that we love the Israelis, uh, Israel Israelites more than the Muslims. We have been neutral. Kasi ako may pamilya ako na Muslim. I have many grandchildren who are Muslims. So I cannot afford really to be... Ako neutral tayo. Still, when the time comes that he has to make a final decision, Duterte said he will always stand for what is right. My decision would always be... Ano? When you come to, when you, when you sit down and come to think about it, then you start to sort out what is really wrong and how much is right and how wrong it is on the other side. And if you have the decision, meron ka ng ano, ako, I stand for what is right.
It can be remembered that former President Rodrigo Duterte has condemned Hamas for its barbaric attack against civilians, including Filipinos, and he also condemned the Israeli occupation. For God and my beloved country, this is Ruth Hamilton, SMNI News.